Hello, hello, and welcome to the Never Fat Deluxe podcast. My name is Julius, and I will be your host for this evening, day, night, wherever you are in the world. Perhaps you're trapped in the Sahara Desert, where you're forced to drink camel's blood to survive, which is obviously a very harsh reality for some people out there. And you thought, you know what? I want to be entertained, but also I need some tips and advice on my porn addiction, which is killing you. Killing you! It's killing you, man! you got to get some help! Well, that's okay. I'm here to help and provide you with that nourishing care that you don't seem to have in your life. I'm like your father that never existed. If you had a father... Yes, no, that's a very dark place we're going down. So, yes, I'm Julius... Obviously, a crazy drug addict who can't be trusted, so just don't listen to the show. And today, we're going to be talking about uh, a little thing called relapse. And so that's going to be today's topic, relapse. What is relapse? Well, you're going to find out. Uh, If you don't find out, well, then I've most likely gone off tangent, as I have during this introduction, but that's okay. So yeah, you're probably wondering, what's this podcast about? Well, it's about porn addiction, how we can overcome porn addiction, because it's super serious although I, I'm sure you probably got the gist of it. Maybe you listened to the first episode and you thought, well, yeah, okay, so that's what it's about. In addition to the podcast, I also run a website called Never Fap Deluxe, which basically aims to help people suffering from porn addiction, such as yourself, or maybe you know someone, you know, refer them over, get them some help. Everyone needs help sometimes. I know I need help. I'm having a nervous breakdown right now. So there's heaps of things you can do. Uh, you can go on the website, you can uh, check out our Discord channel. That's really good. We've got heaps of people there uh, talking about their porn addiction, which is obviously what you want. Now, I thought it'd be cool to start the show. Obviously, it, it's gonna we're going to be talking about relapse and that kind of thing. But I thought before we get to that, it'd be nice in each episode to talk about mental health, because that's really what this is about and what the porn recovery process is about. It's about mental health. It's about how we can become healthier mentally and essentially replace those habits of watching porn. Perhaps you've got other things like, you know, you overeat or you have anxiety or depression. Well, let's talk about it. And I want to talk about it from my point of view, because maybe that will help you better understand some of the things that I struggle with. And maybe you can apply that to your own life. So how has my mental health been? Well, my mental health's been good. It hasn't been great. Uh, It's great now, but over the past week, it's sort of been up and down. I think essentially what happened is I I started this discourse channel that I mentioned earlier, and it's been making me a bit manic in the sense of like, it's this shiny new thing. You know, I'm getting new members coming on board and we're talking and it's like, it's just crazy. It's like, wow, these people really care. And, you know, we want to make this great community. And so I've just been like checking my phone every three seconds, which is really bad because it becomes habit to the extent where you don't even think about it. It's just like, I'm going to pick up my phone and look through these, these, these discord messages. And I'm sure you might do a similar thing with Facebook or Instagram. You know, you're at home, maybe you're sitting on the toilet doing a number two or a number one. The read doesn't discriminate. (laughs) My last name is Reed. So that's why I referenced myself in the third person. So maybe you do that with Facebook, Instagram, to the extent where, you know, you'll be on the couch and you'll just flip through Instagram because that's just what you do. So I was sort of doing that with the Discord channel, but what happened was I sort of recognized the behavior and awareness, obviously very important to the porn recovery process. I recognized the behavior and I I challenged it. I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to do it. And so I haven't done it and it's just been great. The other issue I've been facing is that there seems to be a lot of pressure that I feel doing Never Fap Deluxe because I literally spend all my time doing it uh, because I want it to be an amazing resource. I want it to be something that you can basically find all the information that you need and it requires quite a lot of work. As a result, there's just so much to do and it's unfortunate in the sense that I know that the website won't be fully complete until maybe next year, but there's only so much I can do. You know, I've got two hands. I'm limited to the 24-hour schedule that seems to be binding me to this reality, but it's okay now because I've learned to relax. I've learned to accept it, and a big thing that's really helped me is journaling, and I can recommend this, and this is part of what we use the discourse channel for, is journaling your progress. So we have an accountability channel, Essentially, what we do is that we post what we did for that day. Uh, In terms of posting, what I essentially mean is we post 
well, here are the guidelines is what I should have said. So the guidelines are that we post our healthy coping mechanisms for that day. So for most people, it's usually meditation. It's like, I meditated for that day or I did exercise, those kinds of healthy things. So we've been doing a lot of that, but also journaling in my patron, which I do once a week. Essentially, I write a weekly update of all the work that I did for NeverFap Deluxe. And it's just incredible because I don't realize how much work I actually do, but I do a significant amount of work. And to actually see the work that I've done written into a sort of report is just amazing because it's like, wow, I actually did do a lot and I'm not completely useless. So yeah, mental health update, struggled a bit, but now it's amazing. And you can always tell that your mental health is good when you're able to effectively meditate without distraction. Because what I find is that when I am sort of thinking about other things, it's really hard to meditate. But if you're meditating well, then it's like, okay, so I've got everything else in my life sorted. So it's like I'm remaining balanced. I'm not pushing myself too hard. I'm respecting myself and giving myself the opportunity to relax and just be calm. So that's what it's about. Now, that's the mental health update. I hope it invigorated you to make positive change because that's what it's about. It's what it's about. It's what it's about. So today we're going to talk about relapse. What is relapse? What constitutes relapse? These are all important questions that a lot of people have been thinking about and often sort of we use to sabotage ourselves, but of course we'll get to that a bit soon. So, I mean, let's just talk about some of the scenarios that people think about. I mean, does masturbating to porn constitute as relapse? Uh, If you... (laughs) Yes, it does. Um, But other questions that are perhaps a bit more ambiguous. So what if you just like, you know, temporarily think about like a breast or something? Does that constitute as relapse? What about wet dreams? Uh, Wet dreams relapsing. Uh, What about orgasming during sex? I mean, if you orgasm during sex, does that count as relapse? Because, well, orgasm is what we're told bad. These are things that people get obsessed about and This is essentially why I wanted to do a podcast on the topic, because I felt it was important. Now, the reason why it's important is because relapse seems to be a point of confusion for a lot of people. Not just a point of confusion, but also a point of distraction. It's like we create these boundaries as an excuse to do dumb shit, like thinking that if you just Google safe images of women, that it's not technically relapse because it's not porn or... Or in a lot of cases, just edging to porn, but not orgasming and thinking as if, well, that's okay because I technically didn't orgasm, so it's not like I relapsed or anything. So we do all these things that we tell ourselves that are okay. And in fact, I don't. I think we know on some level that it's not okay, but we're so addicted and we're having those urges that we just want to do it anyway and then blame it on this thing that we've done. So when we set these boundaries, we essentially almost create them to be broken when you think about it. So today, what I want to do is define a healthy understanding of what relapse is so that you don't fall into this trap of edging or, you know, looking at pictures of women on Google search images because, you know, you think it's okay because I'm here to tell you that those behaviors are never okay. So what is relapse? Well, we first need to change our understanding of what relapse is. So, for example, most of us commonly associate relapse with essentially masturbating to porn and then orgasming. We say, well, the moment we orgasm is when we technically relapse because that's when we've technically done the deed, so to speak, which is sort of interesting and is true to an extent, but relapse is actually a lot more fundamental than that. What relapse is actually about is behavior. What does this mean? Well, it comes down to our brain and how it functions relative to these behaviors that we exhibit on a daily basis. So the first thing we need to do to understand how behavior works is to think about the brain and how it processes what we do on a daily basis. Here's the thing. Your brain doesn't distinguish between good and bad behaviors. While you personally may recognize relapse because you've defined it in some way, shape or form, your brain doesn't actually do that. What your brain does is that it receives input and then processes it. That's all it does. It doesn't go, okay, so this is a bad behavior. This is a good behavior. You literally just feed it behaviors and then it basically responds. So it doesn't judge, but you do. What this essentially means is that your brain actually can't distinguish between positive or negative behaviors. It merely registers the behavior and then your brain commits to it. So this is a very important concept. What this essentially means is that 
the more time you spend doing something, the more you're going to reinforce that behavior. And it's really up to you to decide whether that behavior is positive or negative and then to pursue that behavior. Now, this is huge because once you understand this, it basically answers all your questions to do with relapse. It no longer becomes about edging or thinking about porn or, you know, is it okay to orgasm to porn? These are questions that all become irrelevant. So essentially, what your strategy comes down to are these two very important things, limiting and reducing the number of negative behaviors that you do, but also increasing and promoting the positive behaviors that you do. If you do those two things, you're essentially going to change the way your brain processes information as well as how it processes future information in the sense of creating and forming new and positive habits. So yeah, good behaviors, bad behaviors. So with this understanding in mind, let's come back to our initial question, what is relapse? So for example, does masturbating to porn constitute as relapse if you don't orgasm? Well, for most people, yes. And really it comes down to asking one very simple question. Is masturbating to porn a negative behavior or a positive behavior? And certainly in the context of a porn addiction, I believe it's a negative behavior. Not only negative, but somewhat pointless. And I think it's also helpful to understand that pointless behaviors are negative in the context of a porn addiction. So for example, masturbating to porn doesn't really serve a purpose. I mean, it feels good, but it doesn't serve any greater purpose or meaning. It doesn't help you improve your mental health in any way, for example. And even if you were to masturbate without porn, orgasming itself is addictive and usually a trigger for people to watch porn. So if it doesn't help you, then it's most likely a negative behavior. For example, sitting around and doing nothing is a negative behavior. I mean, some people might say it's neutral, but if it's not helping you overcome your porn addiction and rewire your brain in such a way that it's going to help you better deal with your emotions, then it doesn't really serve a purpose, at least in terms of the recovery process. So what if you just temporarily think about a nipple or a breast? I mean, does that constitute as relapse or a a negative behavior? In the context of how the brain works, yeah, it kind of does, because Even though it's not the extent of orgasming, you're still reinforcing that pathway and that behavior in your brain, which isn't helping you. Now, the idea is that with regular meditation, you can learn simply not to have those thoughts. And that's really the great thing about Neverfap Deluxe is that we focus on awareness techniques that essentially help you have full control over your mind. And so you don't have those thoughts. It's just great. And of course, we'll be, I should do, I will do an episode at some point about meditation. It's such an important thing. And if you're not doing meditation, then I highly recommend that you do. It's essentially the difference between those who succeed and those who don't. So what about wet dreams? Are wet dreams considered a form of relapse? Well, no. And the reason for this is because it's not really a behavior in the sense that it's something we've consciously done. An important point to note is that behaviors need to be conscious in order to be effective, so to speak. And so because you're exhibiting these behaviors in an unconscious state, it's not really affecting you in the same way than if you were to consciously go ahead and and masturbate to porn. Lastly, what about orgasming during sex? Because that's a big one. People often say, well, I'm not watching porn, but I'm orgasming during sex and I still feel terrible and I still have these urges. Well, that's your answer why. Because when you orgasm during sex, essentially the key thing to understand is that orgasming as a behavior is addictive within itself because of the huge dopamine rush it produces. And so technically, even though it's not to porn, it's still what I would consider a negative behavior. So yeah, a lot of these things do count as some form of negative behavior because in the context of our porn addiction, they don't help us. Or even if they aren't as bad as, say, masturbating to porn, Things like orgasming can still trigger us. And I'm sure it's okay, maybe, if you know, you're, you've know you been off porn for, say, five years, that it might be okay to orgasm again during sex. But <laughs> I'm definitely not at that stage, so I can't comment. All I know is that if I orgasm during sex, that it will trigger me to watch porn. So it's good to stay away from those behaviors which people find problematic, essentially. Now, if I had one piece of advice, practical advice... For the kids, for the kids, (laughs) in regards to how best to think about relapse and how to think about all this knowledge and, and, and process it on a daily basis, I would say it's about focusing on the small things that you do every day and not worrying about the degree to which you're reinforcing these behaviors. I mean, this is sort of part of the reason why relapse counters are often considered counterproductive, because people think that 
you know, I can go 90 days without watching porn or masturbating to porn or masturbating and have a solid 90 days of just great mental health and then feel as if they've thrown it all away if they do relapse. The thing is, that's not how it works. How it works is that for 90 days, you committed to your mental health, which means you were reinforcing those positive behaviors throughout that period, which means you were essentially winning. You were winning for those 90 days, and that's a great thing. You didn't lose those 90 days by relapsing, and certainly you're not back at square one, as is indicated by this, your, your relapse counter. You've actually just continued on, you had a small bump, and now you're ready to rock and roll. Part of the reason why this is effective is because when you focus on the small things, you're essentially living in the present moment. And when you're living in the present moment, you're recognizing what you can do in that moment, which is about as in control as it gets. Because if you're thinking about the moment to moment, you're thinking about your behaviors, you're thinking about what your mind is thinking. And when you've got those things in your sort of mental awareness space, it's very easy to make good decisions and go, okay, so I'm doing this thing. Maybe that thing isn't very productive. Okay, I'm going to do this other thing instead. So definitely think about those small things you can do every day in the moment to moment. It will be great. In terms of developing a long-term strategy for preventing relapse, well, the solution is always the same, and I will talk about this again and again and again, and I will hammer you until you until you die. Okay, I'm not going to physically assault you with a, a tool or instrument, but I will keep pushing this point. Meditation, it comes down to consistent meditation and consistent practice of your mental health. If you do those things, you will get better. If you don't, you will suffer the pain train. The pain train will visit you. It will do the pain thing it does and you will feel terrible because you will relapse again and again and again because you didn't commit to your mental health. And the worst thing is that you're going to be questioning, what did I do wrong? I mean, I've tried all these things, blah, blah, blah. No, you didn't meditate. If you meditate, you'll be fine. It's the same thing every time people come to me and they go, oh, you know, I've been reading all these articles and I've been exercising and all this stuff. And then I ask them, well, have you been consistently meditating? And every time they go, oh, no, I didn't think it was a big deal. Bam, there's your problem. So if you don't meditate, you're going to suffer. And of course, as I mentioned before, it's about recognizing behaviors and learning to change them because often our minds work on autopilot where we don't even really think, we just sort of do and that's that's not good because that's when we essentially fall back into old habits. If we're not questioning those habits, nothing will change. In the recent case, as I sort of mentioned earlier, was the Discord channel. I was checking it obsessively. I couldn't stop because I wasn't thinking. I wouldn't think. I would just go, oh, phone, pick up, Discord, great. No. So what I started doing was I actually stopped myself and I thought for a moment and I thought, is this behavior negative or positive? Is it helping me in any way? I recognized, no, it's not. So I stopped doing it. And it's sort of funny when you tell people this, that it's really as simple as recognizing the behavior because people just assume it's stupid because it's so simple. It really is so simple. It's literally standing there and thinking about what you did. And people don't do it. I don't know why. It's sort of funny because I didn't do it. I mean, I know why because people think it's silly. But it's actually really effective. So give it a crack. If it doesn't work for you, well, I mean, clearly that means you're wrong. (laughs) I'm kidding. Um, It's cool, man. It's cool. In the broader scheme of things, there's obviously a heap of things you can do to actually encourage your mental health. Uh, It means learning new skills learning practices which help promote awareness, learning self-respect. I mean, self-respect is such a big thing. And yeah, adopting all these positive strategies that teach you positive skills. And you can find it all on the NeverFap Deluxe website. There are so many articles on the website which describe how to adopt routine, awareness, and basically everything that you could possibly want. So in summary, it really comes down to behaviors, positive behaviors such as pledging money to my patron. <laughs> Ka-ching! Oh, you don't have to do that, by the way. It's cool. I've got a job because I'd love to do this full-time. And if you pledge, then obviously I can do this full-time. But yeah, aside from pledging money, hello, hello, uh, you can also obviously work on your mental health, as I've been describing. Get on the meditation bandwagon. It's so good. It's You don't realize how good it is until you do it. And of course, negative behaviors, such as masturbating to Donald Trump. Don't do that. Don't masturbate to Donald Trump. Not only is is it not cool, it's not just uncool, but, you know, you've got other people you can masturbate to. 
Masturbate to Oprah, a strong, powerful black woman. That's what this society needs. Okay, I'm joking. Don't masturbate to anyone. Especially don't masturbate in front of the mirror. That's creepy. Especially, Well, I guess it's not creepy if you're filming it and then making money off it by sending it to people. It's like, yeah, hey, look at this. This is viral, baby. I make no sense. So yeah, that's what it comes down to. The more negative behaviors you reinforce, the worse it's going to get. The more positive behaviors you reinforce, the better it's going to get. It's really that simple. It doesn't matter the extent to which you do those things. It really matters about the frequency. And that's why I talk about consistency and practice. Because the more consistent you are, the more it's going to train your brain. It's really that simple. So I hope you learned something. I hope you don't hate me because I hate myself. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. Hello, hello. That made no sense. I was trying to be like kinky Asian, but it didn't work. So if you're feeling kinked up and you may be touching your gash, well, then I did a good job. If not, well, then I'm clearly just a racist, even though I'm half Asian myself. There you go, people. An Asian Australian. He's out there to murder your children. So thank you for listening. If you've got any comments or questions, please direct them to the website. We've got a great web... Well, I've got a great website. I built it. Thank you very much. Uh, And it's got all sorts of things. There's a contact form. If you're into that kind of thing, get in contact. Talk to the read. And also, there's our Discord channel if you like to join the discussion. Uh, Yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, I hope you have a better understanding of relapse. Hopefully, you don't relapse. Although, if you like to relapse, well, that's up to you. Obviously, don't relapse. I was joking. Have a great day or night if you're about to sleep. And I'll see you next fortnight on the NeverFap Deluxe podcast.